Okay, so we showed the process of scanning this uh, pump housing, and that was relatively straightforward. And I've gone ahead and scanned the remainder of these parts uh, doing the exact same process. So we scan in a couple of different orientations and then align it, merge it all together. We did the same thing for the uh, gear and shaft as well as this other gear. So we're going to go from the uh, scanning portion of this into doing the reverse engineering. And we'll lay out a few different ground rules that we're going to use during this reverse engineering process. So with uh, reverse engineering of mechanical parts, we can do that for a couple of different re reasons. One is to replicate the part exactly as it was, uh, which is a common application. Uh, or we want to take apart, build all of the core components of it that are necessary, and then modify certain aspects of it for our own needs. Uh, and that's really the concept that we're going to be using in uh, this particular process. So we're not going to be as concerned with replicate the, replicating this part exactly as it was, but rather modifying it in a few different ways that'll make it a little bit more accurate, a little bit more precise for our own application and building out all of the core components of it as they would be in CAD rather than as the part exactly is because any sort of real world part is going to have imperfections in it. And with those imperfections, we're gonna to need to make some decisions on what aspects of that part we're gonna modify and uh, as we dive into this process, you'll see how we really make those decisions and uh, the, the core steps that we need to look at as far as what are key components, what need to stay in particular locations, and what, uh, what components can we adjust out to make a little bit better for our application. So we'll start by reverse engineering the cap of the housing and then we'll move on to the rest of the parts. Okay, so we have this cap here and we're gonna go ahead and load that into SOLIDWORKS. And then we'll go ahead and import our cover or cap directly into mesh to surface for SOLIDWORKS. So with this software, one of the critical things that we wanna do first is create all of our core primitives that we're gonna use for alignment. So we'll start with the bottom portion of this cap, that really flat machine surface, and use that as our first datum reference. And then we'll move on to a couple other axes, one bolt hole location, and this center core axis that's moving through the part as our three constraints. And we can constrain those in a really accurate fashion using meshed surface that's going to align our part directly to our top, right, and front planes inside of SOLIDWORKS. It's going to make this process really simple and easy for us. From there, we can just go ahead and move into creating a cross-section uh, with our cross-section tool and fitting sketch entities. So one thing uh, to note with this tutorial series is we have sped up the process uh, just to make this a little bit more easy and simple to digest. So we've gone through and used our fit sketch entities tool to uh, pull out some of the rough geometry that we want on our part. And right here, uh, one of the core aspects of what I wanna do is make sure that we get a really accurate center line on our part itself. So we have that center axis that we're using for our reference, uh, but you'll notice that our XYZ coordinate is actually located above that axial location because we used the bottom planar surface of our part as our main datum reference. Uh, so because of that, we're spending a little bit more time uh, building out the center axis that is represented by the rectangle on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. And we'll come back to that here in just a few moments. So the next thing to look at is if we take a look at the back of our part, we have this draft angle. Uh, and in order to figure out what the best thing to do is to reverse engineer this out, we're going to go ahead and just kind of uh, generate a few other lines 
and uh, really determine whether we want to keep that as a draft or as a flat surface. So for the purposes of this part, we're going to keep that draft angle and this revolve on the back half of our uh, cover. And then on the front half of this cap or cover, you can notice on the sketch, we've got this uh, bottom right hand corner that is actually smaller than the top right hand corner. So we're working off of the largest aspect of this part first, revolving that out. And as we build out the rest of the components of this part, we'll go ahead and uh, see how we can best recreate that shape when we have a few other solid bodies uh, built here. So finally, we want to go ahead and build this as a solid part. And to do that, we're just going to simply offset a couple of surfaces here, or a couple of lines rather here, uh, to simply build out a solid thick surface on the inside of our part. And then we'll go ahead and just trim away the data that we don't need. And now we've got the basic geometry of our part that we can go ahead and revolve around this center line. So we'll let SOLIDWORKS just automatically close that for us. We'll build out this revolved surface. And now we can see we've got the first part of our object created. Uh, and we do notice as we built this out, there's a portion of this that is revolved below the part. Uh, so we will trim that out. But before we do that, let's go ahead and do our second revolve here off to the side and see if that's going to intersect below the bottom of the part as well. Uh, so to do this secondary revolve, because it's not lined up to one of our main coordinates inside of SOLIDWORKS, we're going to go ahead and create another mesh primitive inside of mesh to surface and use this to drive an axis through our part. So one of the great things about these mesh primitives inside of mesh to surface is when we build out an axis, we can constrain that axis. So for example, here we're going to go ahead and build out a cylinder, look at it, make sure it looks pretty accurate, and then we're going to select our right plane and constrain that axis to our right plane. So we know that we have a real good reference to work off of when we go in and build a secondary plane uh, through that axis, which we'll go ahead and do. And with that plane, uh, we're going to select our first reference as our top plane. And then our second axis, it's just going to be coinciding. And we know that everything's lining up correctly because SOLIDWORKS allows us to build out this plane. Uh, so we have a nice, accurate, true to CAD representation of where the center line of this part should be. So from here, we're going to go ahead and repeat the same process as we did on the other revolve, where we'll simply just go ahead and uh, start building out some sketch entities and then take those sketch entities and revolve them out into a solid shape. And while we're doing this, we're taking note of any sort of draft angles again that are on this part. Uh, for our purposes, we're mainly going to be removing the majority of these draft angles. Uh, and you can see here, we're just tweaking that corner, making sure that it is perfectly vertical and then we're going to use that as our main driving point. We'll go ahead and get those lines horizontal. And from there, we can just go ahead and finish trimming out our part. Uh, one way that I really like to do this is by simply using the standard sketch tools inside of SOLIDWORKS as opposed to using fit sketch entities in mesh to surface. Whenever I know that we're going to be doing some immediate constraining, uh, it just makes the process a little bit more simple and efficient to do. And for the last couple pieces here, you can see we've got a chamfer. Uh, and with that chamfer, one thing I like to do personally is just go in and put a line there for right now. And that way, when we revolve this part out into a 3D shape, we can get a better look at where that chamfer is, not just in one cross section, but across the entire part. And then from there, we can make a determination of how we want to uh, really fit that in closer to the end of the build of this part. So now we've got the majority of our geometry built out. Uh, and with that, we can go ahead and 
revolve out our surfaces as need be. And then we'll see how that compares to the other surface that was created. So looking at these two surfaces, we can see that we uh, created this part a little bit smaller as far as the front face than the previous part. Uh, and that's one of the great things about how we can work here with mesh to surface inside of SOLIDWORKS is now that we're starting to see how these components join together, we can figure out which one of those we want to use as our primary front face, and then we can adjust the other model to it accordingly or we can use a trimming tool if everything's oversized to get a really accurate position on where we actually want to end off that surface. But for now, let's go ahead and address the uh, areas of these revolves that are coming below the surface of our part. So we're gonna go back to our Create Primitives tool inside of Mesh to Surface. So we're going back and creating a plane here to uh, trim off the bottom portion of that part using our intersect tool. And now we have a really good starting uh, two core components for this cap or cover. And we can go ahead now and create out a 2D profile for the exterior of our part where our bolt hole locations are and build that out as well. So we're gonna create another cross section here inside of mesh to surface. We're just using single slices for this part uh, because we're really trying to modify a lot of things as a whole. We're gonna rely more on 2D slices and then look at that in comparison to a, a full three-dimensional compare of the CAD geometry to the scan data, which we'll see here in just a few moments. And now that we've got our basic 2D profile built out, we can see a visualization of where all of our geometry is and some of the things that we're gonna wanna go ahead and adjust. So we can see here from this 2D view, we've gotten three different uh, perspectives of where that front face of that part is. Uh, one was oversized, our secondary revolve was undersized, and this 2D reference here is showing right in the middle. And a lot of that comes from the fact that we have a uh, pretty heavy draft on the front of this part, and we're taking these cross sections from various reference points. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and build out the majority of our components as is, as we see them, and then we'll worry about doing our constraining and dimensioning uh, once we get a little bit more of the geometry of the part built out. So the core concept to keep with that in mind is we're not necessarily concerned about making the part as accurate as we possibly can at the moment, but rather we're just trying to get all of the base geometry built into our part so we can visualize it well and then start figuring out what dimensions and various aspects of this geometry we want to uh, maintain and what we want to remove. So we'll go ahead and finish constructing out just a few more pieces here. You can see there, we're gonna go ahead and just build this body out all the way to the largest surface that we see. And then we'll go ahead and just trim out a few extra pieces. And then using our corner trim tool, we'll go ahead and trim out the remaining uh, entities here. And then we'll simply just power trim the rest of the data away. Okay, so now we've got the basic geometry of our part. Uh, we'll go ahead and put a few fillets in here. And now we've got a few different size fillets on this part. So we're just gonna try and batch those together. Uh, so we had those one inch fillets there. We've got some quarter inch fillets here on the sides of the part. And then it looks like we've got some smaller fillets here, about 0.2 or 0.175. And then we've got that little corner position there that we need to figure out what we're gonna do with. So for now, we're just gonna leave that as not filleted at all. And we'll either come back to our sketch or we'll work with that in the 3D extrusion. So from here, we wanna extrude that solid body up. And uh, a trick that I like to use for these extrusions is just simply visualizing the part. 
Uh, once we figure out where that extrusion should be to, you can see we've got our 0.3 inch value right now. If we adjust that up to 0.31, it looks like it's coming to the very top of our part. So we can make a decision of whether we want to leave it at a 0.3 inch or a 0.31 inch uh, object. But for right now, we'll just extrude it all the way up to that position. So as we've gone through this construction process, you'll notice that we filled in a couple of these more critical hole locations on our part. Uh, I personally like to do it this way from a foundation standpoint. So we're building out all of the core bodies. And then if we need to come back in and extrude out certain precise holes, we'll just do that as a secondary operation. That way we're not super concerned with the uh, parts being built uh, in a particular order of operations uh, right off the bat but rather we have a little bit more flexibility to just get all the geometry there in place and start understanding our part. Because quite often with these reverse engineering processes, everything that we're doing is more of a learning experience. So we're gonna need to go in and figure out all of the core aspects of this part the way we actually want it, and then build that geometry as is. So now you can go ahead and see we're using our comparison tool to really take in a good hard look at the very front of this part. And one of the things that we're noticing is that front surface is much larger. So this is a point where we're going to make a decision whether or not we're going to put that draft angle that was on the front of the part um, there or to uh, just leave it as it is and extend that front shaft out. And uh, for now, we're actually going to just really create a bunch of cross sections through that one particular area to get a better idea of what that looks like and what we actually need. And if we look at these cross sections on the very front face of our part, we'll see we've got this nice consistent draft angle that's right there that we're gonna go ahead and make the decision to keep in uh, this particular part. So to do that, we're simply going to uh, create what I call a cutting tool where we'll simply just create a line through the area that we want to slice away and then close off that sketch uh, and then just perform a uh, cutting operation to get rid of all of that excess geometry. And with this one, we'll go ahead and just pull it to the very bottom of that original smaller cylinder and look and see how that fits through our part. Now, because we've got a uh, cast part, you can see that there are some imperfections and some variation throughout the part. So we're gonna go ahead and make the decision now to just create an undersized part. If we wanted to make this a little bit larger, uh, then we could just simply extend out that smaller cylinder in its original 2D sketch and perform the process that way as well. But for now, this is going to uh, best suit our needs. And if we wanna make a change in the future, uh, we can just come back to this and adjust it accordingly. So now we'll go ahead and tackle this uh, little boss that's on the side of the part here. You can see that that boss is kind of in a uh, little bit of an odd orientation from an angle standpoint. So what we'll do to go ahead and build that out is we'll go ahead and do a mesh selection around that planar surface. And with that mesh selection, we're just gonna go ahead and build out a, uh, a sketching plane there, just best fit to that particular surface. So with that now, we can go ahead and use that plane as our uh, primary sketching plane to build out that uh, little uh, boss that's coming off of our cylinder here. So there's a lot of different ways that we can build this part out, uh, but we've done a lot with the cross-section tool. So now we'll actually do this uh, from more of a visualization standpoint. So instead of doing any sort of cross-sectioning, we're just gonna go normal to that planar position. Uh, and we're just gonna use our standard SOLIDWORKS sketch tools to, to build out a circle uh, right there in the center of our part. And then from there, we'll go ahead and build out the larger radius and we'll throw a couple lines in there and start getting a visual idea of what this part is supposed to be. So uh, one of the great advantages of using a uh, mesh inside of 
SOLIDWORKS with this reverse engineering process is we have so much visualization to where we can actually start uh, trying to figure out what these critical dimensions should be for the various aspects of our part. So now that we know that we're uh, in our center position and we have all that geometry, we can simply just figure out those hole diameters, make adjustments accordingly, and make those changes if we need to, uh, which we will do here at a later point uh, in the process. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and simply extrude that body into our other solid body and maintain that geometry as we see it. So now we've gotten the core aspects of this part created and we'll go ahead and just finish up with a couple of cutaways. So we can see that we have this little uh, gallery in the bottom of the part that we're gonna want to extrude out and it's a relatively small uh, feature. So we're just gonna create a cross section just below the surface and with that, we'll build out the uh, various aspects of this geometry as we see. We're gonna use the simplest features first. So I'm going in and drawing all of the straight lines that we see. Then we can go ahead and start building out any sort of arcs. For this person here, we'll just go ahead and make a tangent arc there. And with these arcs, we're not even gonna worry about fitting the sketch entities, but rather we'll just kind of sketch them as we see them using our standard sketching tools inside of SOLIDWORKS. Then we'll perform a couple of trim commands and then the rest of these we're gonna go ahead and tackle with fillets. Okay, so now we have that basic shape created. So we'll simply take that geometry and we'll go ahead and cut that data away from the bottom surface of our part. Uh, we'll go ahead and start out with uh, about 40 thousandths of an inch, maybe 50 thousandths of an inch. See what that looks like. We can see we need to go back and just fix a little bit of our part here. It looks like we left a little piece of geometry in there, which we did. So we'll go ahead and just repair that really quickly. And now we'll go back to our extrude and it looks like it's gonna let us do it this time. So we'll do a 50 thousandths depth of cut for right now. Maybe even a 30 thousandths. And we'll compare that back to the mesh uh, to see what that looks like here in just a couple of moments. So now we'll just go ahead and build a, a circle in that larger hole in that oil gallery, extrude that into our part. And at this point, we can go ahead and start addressing, uh, cleaning up some of these hole locations. So for instance, on this diameter here, we'll just go ahead and create a circle that's the same size as the opening for that hole. And we'll just create a cut extrude down to the bottom surface of that part. And we'll go ahead and repeat the process on the uh, front portion and we'll choose to bring that back to that location there. And now we really just have one more feature to address with this uh, last remaining uh, gallery location on the underside of this cover. So we'll make that just really simply by creating a couple of circles and then intersecting those to create a slot and then just trim away all the excess data. Cleaning up any of the little pieces that may be left over. And finally, we'll go ahead and extrude that up into our part uh, as we see fit. So now at this point, we've got the basic geometry of our part. Uh, so we'll do a little bit more dimensioning and cleanup when we get to the assembly portion. Uh, but for now, we have the main aspects of this part as we really want it. Uh, so we'll just put a couple fillets on it to make it look a little bit cleaner, uh, have a little bit more data the way that we want it. 
And now at this point, we have the basic cap completely built out. And we can see that compared to the original scan file. And now we'll go ahead and move on to reverse engineering the main portion of the pump housing.